Uh, it's me again. Uh, it's part two of my water change. Um, first step I take when doing my water change is unplugging the return pump and I unplug my protein skimmer and my phosphate reactor. I let the uh, the water from the overflow just continue to run till it stops on its own. That way when I turn everything back on I just turn my pump on and that's it. It just starts running on its own. The siphon will start back up again on its own. So that's the easiest way to do it. Um, I walk here in my room and uh, shut off my power heads and stuff. Here's my tank. Alright, I gotta shut my uh, all the power heads off. That way, uh, when I turkey base some of the rocks and stuff, it the uh, particles and stuff stay suspended in the air. I do water changes once a week, by the way. Um, I mean, it's just easier to do them once a week. Well, it's not easy, but it's the best way to keep your tank maintained properly and, and all that good stuff. So. Let's see here. I got four power heads running in my tank, so. Sorry about all the movement with the camera. Really know any other way to do this? <clears throat> all right. So I got uh, all the power heads shut off, and the water in the overflow box is almost done draining. So first, what I do is siphon out the detritus in my sump. To do my water change, I use uh four or five gallon buckets. Uh, I take about five gallons of water out of the sump, clean out all the detritus, and then come in here in my room and siphon out the rest of the detritus, as you can see. There's a bunch of junk down there, settled at the bottom. And um, <clears throat> I got a couple pictures here on the side of my tank with clowns and anemones. I heard that works to get your clowns in the anemone, but doesn't seem to be working yet so we'll see all right I'm gonna go back in the fish room and uh, start siphoning out some detritus I use a pipe on the end of this hose just because it keeps the hose straight. It's a lot easier to use. You gotta do everything with one hand right now. A little difficult. Start to siphon. Doesn't always work on the first try because my sump's so low to the ground. All right, got it first try. <clears throat> Yeah, you guys can see all that detritus at the bottom. <clears throat> That's what I gotta get out. Oh 
mean, that's the biggest part about doing a water change. It's not only replacing the trace elements in the water, such as calcium, magnesium, and alkalinity. Really, it's, I mean, it's also about removing the dead trace in the tank. I mean, this is what causes the nitrates and phosphates. It's easy to have bare bottom because you can just siphon it right out. If you have a sand bed, you should probably use a vacuum and vacuum it regularly. Be surprised how much detritus settles in your tank that you don't see. Unless you have bare bottom, you can see it. That's what I like about bare bottom. I get detritus in the uh, other compartments too, but I usually only siphon those out. Like every other water change, they don't get quite as bad as the middle section. So I pretty much got all the detritus out of here right now. And filled up the bucket about halfway. I'm just going to stop the siphon right here. And uh, you know, get the rest out of my main tank. There's more in the main tank than in the sump. But as you can see, look at all that detritus I just pulled out. It's good stuff right there. Good stuff. blowing the water out of the hose alright let's move in here back to the room So I got my four buckets right here. They're all measured out to exactly five gallons. So I know that I'm taking out what I'm putting back in. Exactly 20 gallons of water. Uh, got lots of detritus in here. I'm gonna use a turkey baster and uh, push it out from underneath that rock so I can get it all. Nemony is a little crazy looking right now. No flow in my tank, so. Sorry about all the moving around. It's a little difficult to do a wire change with the. Uh, camera in your hand. This is mainly where all the detritus goes. The way I have my flow in my tank just tends to settle in this spot. been having some sino lately but uh it's starting to go away just keeping up with my water changes and 
cut back on feeding, cut back on my light period. Seems to be working pretty well. I also turkey base the Sino every uh, every day. Got all the nasty out of there. It's all out in the open and easy to get to. Which was the goal. Got this Kenya tree about a week ago and it's already dropping branches. And if you can see a little branch down there. Not sure if it was a mistake to get that or not. It's gonna start spreading everywhere. I've heard people have uh, problems with their Kenya's trees just dropping branches so often. They basically just are everywhere in their tanks. Constantly having to pull them out and stuff. Start this other siphon. I mean, there's different ways to do water changes. Um, I've found that this way is just easiest for me. I mean, I'm sure everyone does theirs a little different, but I figured I'd show you guys how I do mine. It usually takes about, say, 15 20 minutes. A little longer right now because I'm obviously using one hand trying to keep this camera still. But, uh, finish filling up this bucket. Bye bye nitrates. Switch buckets here. stuff you want out of your tank. I usually do uh, relatively light feedings every day because I have chromis in my tank. Um, the day of the water change is usually I feed. I do one, you know, heavier feeding with a variety of food. Mainly, I'm, I just feed flakes and. Uh, some of this uh, instant ocean seaweed mush stuff. And then I feed my tang nori on the clip.
I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video for now. I'm gonna do a part three, just so that you guys don't have to sit here while I siphon all this water out. Or maybe I'll just combine the video. But uh, I'll show you guys. I'll pump my water back in and uh, turn everything back on. And uh, all right, see you guys soon.